Today is Thursday, September 26th. We're breaking down what was said in a controversial call that led to a formal impeachment investigation and what you can expect to happen with all of this today. Plus, other news like why the government is suing Match.com, gender-neutral dolls, and a first-of-its-kind technology to apply for jobs. Then hang out after the news for Thing to Note Thursday's bonus interview. We're breaking down the basics of impeachment to help you keep up with the process. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The details are out about President Trump's July phone call with Ukraine's president. The White House released a memo about it yesterday. It's not a word-for-word account of that phone call, but it's pretty close. The AP reports the call record shows President Trump did, in fact, ask Ukraine's president to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son, who, of course, is also one of President Trump's main rivals in the 2020 race. The call record says Trump repeatedly brought up how much the U.S. does for Ukraine and asked for Ukraine's leader to, quote, do us a favor. And the Wall Street Journal says a week before that call, Trump froze $400 million in aid that was set to go to Ukraine. Some say that's election interference and comes across as a mafia-like shakedown. But President Trump did not explicitly offer to do anything in exchange for the investigation. So when Republicans say there was no quid pro quo, that's what they're referring to. President Trump himself says he didn't do anything wrong and even signed off on the memo's release. He called the accusations against him a hoax. Remember, this phone call is, at least in part, the reason a government whistleblower filed a complaint in the first place that then led to House Democrats opening a formal impeachment inquiry. Reports have said the complaint goes beyond the phone call and calls into question more of the president's actions. Well, that original whistleblower complaint was just released to lawmakers yesterday. We don't know yet if it'll be made public. But Trump argues the complaint was politically motivated. Either way, we might learn more today. The Washington Post reports the guy who stopped Congress from seeing that complaint right away, Trump's acting director of national intelligence, is set to testify to Congress today. So things could get heated. Stay tuned. And in today's Thing to Know Thursday, right after the news, I'm talking to an expert who helps break down what's happening and the overall impeachment process. Israel's prime minister is getting another chance at keeping his top job. NBC News reports the country's president is letting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu try for the second time this year to form a government. Remember, he couldn't do it after elections in April, and because he failed, the country held a second election last week. Well, now Netanyahu is getting another try. He has six weeks to form a coalition. If he can't, the opportunity could get passed to someone else to be continued. A new report from the United Nations says oceans are getting warmer, the world's ice and snow are melting, and sea levels are rising. The AP cites the report saying if we continue at this pace, sea levels could rise three feet by the end of the century, triggering stronger, nastier storms. Plus, experts say some islands may not even be livable, and plants, animals, food, people, and our economy could be impacted. But the report says we can still prevent this. CNN says if we lower emissions, sea levels would rise much slower, about four millimeters per year. But if we don't do anything, that number could triple. The CEO of e-cigarette company Juul is out. The Wall Street Journal reports Kevin Burns stepped down. This comes as Juul faces the possibility of a U.S. ban on many of its products. Remember, the Trump administration wants to get rid of flavored e-cigarettes because of the spike in teen vaping and a severe lung disease that's been linked to vaping. Jewel says it's not going to fight the president on a possible ban, even though that could mean a major blow to the company's sales. On top of that, NPR says Jewel will now pull all of its advertising. So that means no more TV, print, or digital ads for Jewel's e-cigarettes. The new CEO is an executive from Altria, which now owns Jewel. It's a major tobacco corporation. The federal government is suing Match Group, which owns the dating website Match.com. USA Today reports Match is accused of tricking people into subscribing to the site. Here's how. It's free to make a dating profile, but users have to pay for a subscription if they want to see or respond to messages from potential matches. Well, Match is accused of notifying non-paying users about messages from fake accounts, and then they subscribe to see them. So in other words, federal regulators say hundreds of thousands of people decided to pay Match.com so they could respond to messages that were actually from fake accounts. By the time those users paid and opened the message, 
It was already blocked because of fraud. The Verge says there are also other accusations against Match.com, like not giving people the promised free trials and making it too tough to cancel subscriptions. But Match Group says not true and calls the FTC's claims outrageous. The company says its efforts have gotten rid of most fraud on the site. And Match plans to fight any allegations in court. All right, more news ahead, but first, let's take a quick break for our sponsor. With social media and work and family and whatever else, you may not think you have the time to sit down and read a book. Well, Blinkist is made for busy people who still want to learn from books without needing to find the time to fully read every single one. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down for you into just 15 minutes so you can read or listen. Blinkist has a big library of books as well. So when I hear about a book that might be interesting, I can pull up the app right then and there on my phone and get reading or listening and learning within minutes. You've heard me talk about the book Factfulness, for example, 10 Reasons We're Wrong About the World and Why Things Are Better Than You Think. That's available on Blinkist. And there are many other popular ones, too, like The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And right now, Blinkist has a special offer. Go to Blinkist.com slash news to start your free seven-day trial. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash news to start your free seven-day trial. Blinkist.com slash news. Now, back to the news. The company best known for Barbie just revealed its first gender-neutral doll. NPR says Mattel released six dolls with different skin tones, hair, and clothes, and can be accessorized to be a boy, girl, neither, or both. The doll line is called Creatable World. Mattel says the new line is meant to allow kids to express themselves freely and be free of cultural norms and labels. Facebook is upgrading its high-tech toy, the Oculus Virtual Reality Headset. CNET says the headset will be able to sense your hands, so instead of using a controller, you'll be able to move your fingers to navigate games and apps. Facebook is also testing out a new virtual reality world called Horizon. CNBC says users will be able to make their own avatars and use them to play games, explore, and hang out with friends in the virtual reality world. It's expected to come out next year. From earbuds to ovens, Amazon announced a bunch of new Alexa-enabled gadgets at its annual hardware event. So here are a few of the highlights. Let's start with the headphones. CNBC says they're called Echo Buds, and they're pretty similar to Apple's AirPods. They're wireless, and the voice assistant Alexa is built into them, so you can talk to Alexa without pulling out your phone or smart speaker. The earbuds cost about $130. Amazon also announced a new wireless technology called Sidewalk. TechCrunch says it uses wireless signals to let users control their home devices up to a mile away. The first product that uses Sidewalk is a trackable dog tag. And then there's the smart oven, which looks sort of like a microwave. It can bake and air fry food, and users can use the Alexa app to tell the oven when to start cooking. Also, Amazon made Alexa-friendly glasses, a smart lamp for kids, and a small indoor ring camera. You can check out all the new gadgets using the links in today's show notes. People interested in working for McDonald's can now ask Alexa or Google for help applying. It's part of an application process called Apply Through. Get it instead of Drive Through? Engadget says McDonald's is the first company to use this kind of technology for hiring in this way. Here's how it works. You start by asking your voice assistant to, quote, help me get a job at McDonald's. Then it will ask for your name, location, what job you want, and other information. From there, you'll get a text with a link to finish up the application online. McDonald's hopes this helps them stand out in the job market and brings in more potential hires. Apply Through is available now in the U.S. and several other countries. Impossible Burger is headed east. Engadget says you can now buy the plant-based ground meat at all 100 Wegmans grocery stores on the East Coast in places like New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and North Carolina. Last week, Impossible Burger made its grocery store debut in Southern California, and now it's available at nearly 130 stores and counting. Impossible Foods hopes to expand to every region in the U.S. by the middle of next year. It's already made a big splash with its meat-free burgers sold at 17,000 restaurants, including White Castle, Burger King, and the Cheesecake Factory. And that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Thing to Know Thursday, where a different expert explains a different thing to know only on Thursdays after the news. And this week, in light of all the news surrounding impeachment, we're talking about the impeachment process. What you need to know about what's happening now, how it all works, and what could be coming next. Keep in mind, this is a process our country has only gone through a few times ever. 
My guest today is Lori Levinson. She's a professor of law at Loyola Law School and a former assistant U.S. attorney in Los Angeles. She's also been quoted in media like Bloomberg and Politico. So here's our conversation breaking down the impeachment process. Hi, Lori. Thanks so much for coming on The Newsworthy. My pleasure. Thank you. So first, let's establish what's happened so far within this impeachment process. There's been an impeachment inquiry. So how big of a deal is that? And what does it really mean? What it means in this case is, frankly, that Nancy Pelosi has joined in the call by other Democrats to say, let's formalize this process and in looking into what the president's been doing. Now, practically, it's not going to change a lot because they were already looking into what the president was doing. They had six committees looking at various allegations. But this formalizes it. It probably makes it a bit easier for them to get some information, subpoena witnesses, and even make arguments to the court. It's stage one. It is not an impeachment. It's nowhere near removing the president from office. What type of information can we expect to come out during this formal investigation? Well, what they're looking for under the Constitution is evidence of treason, bribery, or what we call high crimes and misdemeanors. There's no precise definition of those things, but it's basically a level of activity where you say that the president has abused his power and should no longer be sitting. It's a high standard because we don't want just that willy-nilly change of government, but it's worth looking into. And the particular observations right now that triggered this was the question of whether the president was withholding funds from a foreign nation or otherwise coercing a foreign nation to investigate one of our own presidential candidates and his family. So what is the president's role? How does he defend himself during this process? Well, the president certainly is entitled to, and he does have lawyers. He has lots of lawyers, including his own private lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. He seems to have been using the attorney general, although I'm not sure that's right that he does, Mr. Barr to help him represent himself. So the president can do everything from exerting privilege and not allowing witnesses to go testify, to filing uh, motions in the courts, to squash certain subpoenas, to sending a message that they, he thinks that this is not a fair investigation and not cooperating. Impeachment is essentially formal charges against the president. Can you take us through how the process works in case people aren't familiar? Sure. And we've only been through this process a few times in our nation. But the process begins with what we see here, the House of Representatives. They do an investigation and they decide whether there's enough basis to file articles of impeachment. Uh, That is the next stage that would come. And they might have enough support for that because, of course, the Democrats control the House of Representatives. But even if they get those articles of impeachment, Those then go to the Senate for a trial, and the Senate has to decide whether they are going to remove the president based upon those articles of impeachment, and that has not been done. Uh, So, you know, the odds historically are against a president actually being removed, but it certainly can keep a president in the spotlight, and especially coming up on an election period, make people question who they want to govern them for the next four years. Right. That's a good point. No president in our history has ever been removed through this process because even Nixon resigned before he was technically impeached and removed. Right. And we've had them come close. Don't forget that Bill Clinton, who was impeached for lying about his private sex life, you know, he came within a vote of being, uh, you know, on this trial. But it's um, it's not likely for a president to be removed because there are so many political aspects of an impeachment proceeding. It's not exactly like a trial. Uh, The person who um, is in charge of the actual trial is the chief justice of the Supreme Court. The evidence rules can change. The advocacy can change. So it's nothing like what you would see in a regular courtroom. So some people might ask, what's the point? I think the point is because our Constitution recognizes that we have to have checks and balances and that there needs to be some mechanism to at least expose to the public what the allegations are against the president, dig into those, and in the worst cases, remove or have that president resign. Looking ahead, what is the expected timeline? How long would this inquiry process take before there could be a House vote? No one really knows because you have to, as they say, follow the evidence. 
I was a bit surprised that Nancy Pelosi even pulled the trigger on moving forward to the formal inquiry without reading the transcript of this phone call, because in order to know how long it's going to take, you need to know what kind of investigation you're going to do, which witnesses you're going to talk to, in what context you're going to put these allegations. So to answer your question, this could range months and if it had to, it could range for years, but given the election cycle, that's not likely. Any other common misconceptions you want to help address or anything else you'd like to add about this process? Well, I think that people think in this process is that we all can agree upon what a high crime and misdemeanor is. But even if you just read the reports of today, some people are going to say this election interference, that's a high crime and misdemeanor. Others are going to say there's no quid pro quo, and they're doing that to say that this is not a you know, criminal bribery like the Constitution addresses. So there are going to be lots of little fights along the way, fights as to which witnesses are going to testify and even fights as to what would qualify for the articles of impeachment. And you can read more about this topic and all the stories we talked about in this episode in today's show notes. Just go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes and find today's date. Thank you so much for listening today. If this was helpful information, be sure to share it with someone you know. The Newsworthy is here for you by four in the morning every weekday. We'll chat again tomorrow. Have a great day.